welcome back to another video. So today I have Flora by Maria Trolle and I've got some Prisma colors here. I have been working on a page in this coloring book. It was actually a page that I did a tutorial on for the basics of highlighting, shading, and shadows. Somebody had made a comment on that video recently and it reminded me of the page that I was working on in here. I totally forgot about it and I've been working on pulling out all of my pages that I've used for tutorials and I'm trying to work on completing them so I'm working on a couple different pages at a time and on the page right now I'm coloring a tree and I thought it would be a really fun tutorial to do for y'all on how to create texture when you're coloring things like trees or wood or anything like that so that's what we're going to do today in this video if you check the description box down below you'll find links down there for my Facebook group my Etsy shop my email list and my patreon if you'd like to support me there I also so now have channel membership if you would like to find more information out about that you can click the join button down below this video so this here is the page that I've been working on. Some of you may have seen the video where I colored this adorable little house right here. And when I colored this page, I remember how much I loved it. And I had totally forgotten about it. And so it just sat. And so I decided the other day to go ahead and pull it out and start coloring. And so I put some colors together and started coloring these trees. And I love the way that they're turning out. I am literally obsessed with these trees. Look how cool they look. They're all just intertwined and everything and coming down into the water. I can't wait till I add some color to the water here so I could really get an idea of how it's going to look. I have not decided what I'm gonna do with what I would assume would be sand or dirt back here because there are so many of the same colors right now going on on this page. So I'm going to have to come up with something a little bit creative to color in this dirt that's behind these really cool looking trees. And then I feel like all the flowers and the leaves and such that are behind the house, they're gonna have to be some really creative colors as well. So I've got a couple different video ideas that I wanna do that are focused on this page. But today we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I did this. Now, I've almost finished it on this page. So we're gonna use another page in this coloring book and I'm gonna demonstrate exactly how I did this. But I really love what I did here because I decided to add in some colors that I would normally never use when coloring something like trees. And I absolutely love coloring trees. I know that sounds really weird, but I don't know what it is about coloring trees and creating this really cool textured look, but I just really enjoy doing it. It's almost therapeutic and it's just so relaxing. So I found this page here and we've got a couple trees. And so I think this page would be a great page to demonstrate how I created the look of texture on those other trees. Now, I have four colors here. Now I am using Prisma colors for my darkest color. I'm using chocolate and then I'm using sandbar brown. These two have a really nice contrast between one another and different undertones so they look really good together. And for my highlights, I'm using colors that I never ever would have normally used and I think they ended up looking really, really good. So I've got salmon pink and I've got light peach and the light peach with the salmon pink complement each other really nicely and the salmon pink gives it that bright pop of color. Now, the first thing I wanna mention is that my Prismacolor Chocolate pencil is very, very soft. So I have been having a little bit of an issue keeping it sharp. When you're doing this first step, you wanna make sure that you do have a really nice sharp tip. So I'm gonna sharpen this just a little bit more. So here's what the tip of my pencil looks like. It's nice and sharp. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my pencil by the side and I'm just gonna go over all of these little lines that were already created here by the artist. And I'm just gonna go up and down just like this. And I'm going to go in a circular motion and pull it out just a little bit. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing to this one and I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit again. And I'm gonna go around the entire tree and I'm gonna do this on every single one of these. Now this tree is much smaller than the one I showed 
showed you that I'm working on right now. So it may end up looking a little bit different just because I'll have less space to be able to put my lighter colors. Now here where I've got this knot in the tree, I'm just gonna try to line it. And then this center one, I think I'm just gonna go around the whole entire thing. And then I'm gonna come over this one and just add some color. Now since this pencil, this particular color is so, so soft, I'm trying to go really lightly, but it does help to turn the pencil. That will help me to keep that sharper tip. Now I'm probably not gonna do the entire tree. I just wanted to be able to show you exactly how I lay the color. So I'm not gonna to go all the way to the top because I don't want the video to go on too long, but I just really thought this video would be really helpful for those of you that want to learn how to create texture on anything in your coloring books that you may be coloring, whether it be a tree or just some wood grain. This technique can be used on quite a lot of different things. A house that looks like it is a wooden house, this would look really cool. Even on a house like this one, if you wanted to create this look, you can totally totally do that as well. You would just draw the lines in. Now on this tree, if I wanted to draw in additional lines, aside from what the artist already had there for me, I can just go like this in an up and down motion and I can create my own lines. And after the whole thing is done, I can even come back and do that afterwards if I want to. Now I have my sandbar brown and for this pencil, I want it to be a little bit more blunt. Here's what the tip of my pencil looks like. And everywhere I laid the chocolate, I'm just going to come over that and I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. And since this tree is much smaller, you can probably see what I mean now when I say I'm going to have a lot less space when it comes to my lightest colors, but we're gonna try to fit them in where we can. In the end, we're probably just gonna have a whole lot less of highlighted space. But I am gonna come back and finish off the other tree on the other page so y'all can see it completed so you could see exactly what it looks like. But I wanted to be able to show you the technique. The key here when you're choosing these colors is to choose colors that have different undertones. Like for instance, this sandbar brown and the chocolate, they both have different undertones. And then for your lighter colors, you want to choose colors that go nicely together. But I always like to have one that has quite a bit of pop a color in there. I had originally started out with just the peach and then I looked at it and I just thought that it was missing something. So that's when I decided to grab the salmon pink and add that in there. And when I did that, I just absolutely loved it. And so that's when I was like, I really need to share this. <laughs> And I just thought it would make a great tutorial for any of you that have trees or wood or anything like that, or even houses that you want to give this effect to on your coloring pages. So now I have the light peach and this one does also have a blunt tip and that's fine because we're gonna be going through here and covering a lot more area now and just blending some of these colors out. But you're probably noticing that I am using my colors backwards from what I normally would. If you've been watching my videos for quite some time, you know that I always start with my lightest color and then I move into my midtone and my darkest color and then I alternate the colors like that. But for this tree, I'm doing things a little bit differently and I'm going backwards but I didn't go in the exact order. I grabbed the light peach before I grabbed the salmon pink because I wanted to be able to blend some of these colors out and bring them together just a little bit. So now I'm gonna take my chocolate pencil and you wanna make sure that your tip is really sharp and I'm just gonna go down the outside line of the tree and this will help to give it a whole lot more depth and dimension. And then when I were to come in and do the background here, it's going to make it stand out a whole lot more. And then here where I have this tree laying over the top of this other tree, I'm just gonna come right down here and I'm gonna go very, very lightly, again, holding my pencil to the side and I'm going to come down here and just add some of my darkest color because this tree is laying behind this one and I want to make it look as though it's laying behind this other tree. So now I'm just going to come in with my sandbar brown and I'm just going to blend that line out just a little bit so this way it doesn't look like a harsh line. 
Okay, so now I'm going to come back with my chocolate and I'm going to add a second layer over all of these lines, again, that the artist put here for us. And again, I am pulling it in just a little bit so that the line doesn't look completely straight. And then here in the center, I am just going over that and filling it in. So now I have my light peach again, and I am just going to add another layer of this. And I'm just going in and around all of the other spaces where I've laid the other colors. And I'm trying to move in an up and down motion and kind of blend these other colors right into it. And in some places you might also want to leave a little bit of the white of the paper because doing that is going to give you a little bit extra pop of highlight in those areas. My salmon pink is going to put a pop of color in there and it's going to look really cool. But I want to get my peach laid down first just because I want to lay that salmon pink over the peach and blend it into the areas where I have the peach. Now, I don't want to focus on laying down too many layers right now and just trying to blend some of these colors together. And then here I just need to spread this color out just a little bit. And then right here in the center of the knot, I wanna just blend that a little bit as well. Now for my salmon pink, I did make sure the tip was quite a bit sharper because I don't want a whole lot of this. I just want little pops of color all in and around where I have the other colors. And I wanna blend this into the areas where I laid the peach. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this right here, right where I had some peach. And then down here, I think a little bit would look really good. And then maybe right in here. But you see how that just adds a pop of color? I just think it looks so super cool. It changes the whole look of what I've got going on here. And I am going in an up and down motion because I do want to be able to see that texture. So when you're putting together your colors, just make sure you're choosing colors when you're doing something like this that have different undertones. So for instance, my chalk and my sandbar brown. They are both browns, but they both have different undertones. And so they really stand out from one another and it helps to create that look of texture. And then the colors I chose for the highlights, the peach and the salmon pink, they look really nice together, but one is much more muted and lighter and the other one really pops off the page. And you can totally see that here in the areas where I've laid that color. So now that I've laid down that color, I have my sandbar brown again, and I think I'm gonna sharpen this just a little bit. So now it's just a little bit sharper, but it's not sharp, sharp, sharp. And I want to hold my pencil at the side and I'm gonna go very lightly, and I'm just gonna go in a circular motion and lay another layer of this right in all these spaces where I laid the chocolate. And then to help to create a little bit of texture, I'm going to go in this up and down motion, just like this. And you could see that it's starting to make it look like my tree bark has quite a bit of texture. See how it's creating that look of texture? I really like that. And it's really helping to add a little bit more dimension, but I'm basically just using these lines as a guide. And I'm just gonna continue going up and down and then spreading out all of the areas where I did lay that chocolate. But see how it just looks like it's got so much more depth and dimension now? Sometimes the stroke of your pencil makes all the difference in the world when you're trying Trying to create a certain effect. And I still have some little pops of white like right in here and over here. And so that also makes a huge difference. So now I'm going to use my chocolate pencil and I'm just going to go over these areas just a little bit more just to cover up those black lines. And then down here at the bottom where I have this tree laying behind the other tree. I'm just going to add a little bit more of that color. And again, I am going in an up and down motion right here where I just want to add a little bit more color and I'm pulling it out just a little bit into the other areas. And then I'm gonna do the same thing right here where I've got this knot in the tree. And I'm turning my pencil as I go just to keep that sharper tip on my pencil because I don't wanna go in those areas where it is more white or where I tried to use some of the white of the paper or where I added that pop of color with the salmon pink. And then I wanna go right down this line here, again, just to add a little bit more depth. So now I have the sandbar 
brown and I'm just gonna go over those areas where I laid the chocolate and just spread it out just a little bit and I am again going in an up and down motion like right here I just wanted to add a little bit of a little extra something there just to make it look like it has a little bit more texture. And now I have my peach again and I'm just going to add this color in here because I do want to be able to see that highlight. And again, I am still going to focus on leaving a little bit of the white of the paper, like right in here and over here and some here. And I don't wanna blend it out too much because if you go through and you blend it out too much, you won't be able to see that look of texture. So you definitely don't wanna go through and burnish it. And then I think we'll just do about up to here and then we'll be done with this one. I think that will give you an idea of what it would look like once it is finished and completed. And then I'm going to come back with this salmon pink just to add another layer in there and it will deepen the color and make it just a little bit brighter. But again, I don't want this everywhere. I just want it where I want to see just a little bit extra color. And then if you want to, you can grab your white Prismacolor and in all the areas that you left it white, you can just come in there and add a little bit of white just in those places. It actually looks really good. I really like that. And then up in here, I've got quite a bit of white, but that just makes it pop a little bit more and adds to the depth and dimension and the texture that you've created. Again, you don't wanna take your white and go over the whole entire thing, because if you use your white and you go over the whole entire thing, you're gonna get rid of that look of texture and you definitely don't wanna do that. I'm just coming over and doing a few little final touches and I'm just making sure those colors are blended in. In certain places, again, I don't wanna do it all over the place because I do wanna keep some of that texture. This is the sandbar brown, so I didn't go to my darkest color because I feel like if I go back to my darkest color, it's really going to darken it up and I'm going to lose some of the contrast that I've added with those lighter colors. But with everything we've done, I think you can get an idea of how it will look if the whole tree was done. But that is how you would create texture when you're coloring something like wood or trees or maybe a house that you want it to look like it's got wood grain. And remember, you can use these same techniques even without these lines and you can just go in an up and down motion and create your own lines if you wanted to give something this textured look like say you had a house and you wanted to look like the outside of the house was wood I could do the same technique here on this house and make the house look just like the tree or make it look like the house was made out of wood so here is the other one and you can see I have a whole lot more highlighted areas just because there is not a whole lot of those lines that the artist drew into the tree. They're a lot closer in the other one. So with these being much bigger or much thicker, I'm able to add a whole lot more of that highlight color and really make them pop. But as you can see, just by looking at the space I've not finished yet, you can see that I've got a whole lot more space in here to work with. So if I'm using my sandbar brown, all of the lines where the chocolate are you can see that there's a whole lot more space in between every single one of them. So like in this area here, for instance, I'm probably gonna use a whole lot less chocolate, a lot more of the sandbar brown, as well as the peach. But I'm just gonna come in here with the peach and add a little bit of that all in and around where I've laid the sandbar brown and blend it right in there and smooth it out just a little bit. But since there is a whole lot of space in here, I may also come in with the chocolate and add Add a little bit of my own thing and maybe just put like another one like right in here and see that looks really really cool over here I did the same thing there weren't any lines and I just added a little bit of my own thing but I really enjoy doing that it gives whatever you're coloring a little bit of its own character just by switching it up just a little bit and adding a little bit of that darker color in there but see on this one I would have a lot more space to come back and add this color and make it look a lot more like these areas down here. I guess I could go ahead and just finish it really quickly and I can do it at speed and so y'all can see exactly how it comes together and how it looks when it's done.
Okay, so it is complete and I love the way that it's looking so far. But my thing about this page is I look at it and there's just so many of the same colors. I did try to change it up and that's why I grabbed the salmon pink and the peach because I think that I might have used cream when I did the house. I'd have to go back and look at the video where I did the house. But I love the way that this looks, absolutely love it. And I was actually thinking of doing a follow-up video where I show you how to add some color to a page that just really looks like it has a lot of the same colors on it. I'm gonna have to get pretty creative here because I do need to bring some other colors in. I think I'm gonna grab my color wheel and decide on colors for all of the leaves or the plants or the flowers and all of this in the background. If you would like to see that whole entire process, definitely let me know. But I hope this video was helpful and showed you how to create texture on your coloring pages. It's really all about the colors that you choose and how you lay the colors down onto the object on your coloring page. Everything you see me use in this video will be linked in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.